Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome to the next part of our series on Blender for AI developers. The idea is just to have an informal series just to teach you sort of some of the basics of Blender if you've never really worked with it before. So I left off with this weird cube just sort of floating off in the distance. I'm actually going to delete this with the X key. I select it, click X, and or hit X on the keyboard, and then I can hit hit uh, just click on this delete thing and then it goes away um, I'm actually also going to use a click and drag to select both of these and if for whatever reason you do not have select box as an option up here in the corner you can hit the W key to cycle between these and uh, get it to that box one and then you'll be able to box select these we can delete these two we don't really need them so we're going to create a new object, and I'm going to tell you about the difference between object mode and edit mode. So let's add a mesh, and we're going to add, uh, let's not do a cube, let's do an icosphere. All right, so here's a sphere made out of triangles, pretty cool. And I'm just going to, for good measure, focus on it with the period key. And if you do not have the number pad, uh, if you don't have a number pad, remember you can go to view, frame selected, same thing. So right now we're in object mode, and we've gone over location, rotation, and scale, but these are all relative to the entire object. If we want to actually edit the object inside, we need to switch into edit mode. And edit mode now lets us work with either the vertices, the edges, or the faces. And I'll show you the difference here. So if I have a face selected, I just have this entire triangle selected. If I have an edge selected or multiple, since I've switched into edge mode, I actually have all three edges now sec selected at the same time because I had that face selected. And if I switch into vertex mode, now I have all three of these vertices selected. So I can select one at a time. I can sh hold down shift and I can select as many of these as I want to. And what happens when you have these selected is if you want to move these things, either by using this over here for moving, or with the G key, it's going to move these things right here. So let me show you really quick. If I just move this like this and hit tab, now I've got this shape, it looks different, but the location, rotation, and scale are unchanged. The only thing that's changed is the dimensions because now it's slightly bigger in that Y axis, that Y direction. So the shortcut in and out of object mode is tab. So the tab key, you can just tab back and forth out of these. So you can click away to deselect if you want. And I wanna show you something really interesting. So if I select all of these and I want to move it, so I'm going to move this along the x-axis here. The median point right now is about 3 meters, a little over 3 meters in the positive x direction. But if I switch out of edit mode, the location is still 0, 0, 0. That is because regardless of where the points are inside of this, this object in object mode is still located here. And you can tell because it's got this little dot right here. That is the origin of this uh, object. Okay, so if I were to move this, I can still move it along the x-axis right here. The entire thing moves. That's fine. I'm going to right-click to cancel that. But if I were to rotate this, now it rotates around that pivot point. I'm going to right-click to cancel that. And I'm also going to switch out of local mode because I like to be in global mode and I forgot to change that back in the last video. So you can see that this is actually a, a kind of a different way of thinking of things. So in edit mode, anything you do kind of gets applied to the object, but it doesn't actually change the object container that it's in. So if we were to move this, say back roughly right here, and maybe scale this in the Z direction, so S, Z to do that, we scale it up like this, make sort of this weird uh, stretched egg shape, and then tab out of object mode, you'll see that the scale is 111 still right now. 
But if I tab back in and try and control Z, let's see. If I were to scale it in the Z like this, I could get the same thing, but now the scale of the object is kind of weird. And I could move these points in here in edit mode, no problem, but the scale of this object is going to be weird. And generally, especially when you're trying to export this to another uh, application, you don't want to mess with the scale. You want the scale to be 111. Um, otherwise, things get a little confusing because let's say you wanted to, in your code, let's say in Unity, you wanted to do something where when you got a power up, your entire character went to 2x scale. So you, in your code, you make the scale 2 by 2 by 2. And now, wait a minute, we're back to this weird shape, this shape, instead of the shape we intended, which was something more like this in the Z axis, like this. Now we can set 2 by 2 by 2, or 1 by 1 by 1, and the proportions are kept the same. So I hope that makes some sense. I know it's a little confusing maybe to wrap your head around the difference between object mode and edit mode, but there are definitely important differences and you do want to make sure that you are working in edit mode uh, if you're going to do any sort of scaling, in my opinion at least, or moving vertices around, but you still kind of want to keep that central object. And just as like an interesting example here, I'm going to select all of these. You can use the A key. That'll select all, or you could try and select them like this, but I'll point out that it's only going to select the ones it can see. There is a way to make it so that it selects all. It's this one right here. Now it'll select everything. It's sort of a, it's an x-ray mode. So I'm going to switch back. I'm going to move this up. And so let's say I had this sort of weird shape and this was going to be like a floating robot sort of shape here, uh, you might want the origin to be on the floor, but this floating robot shape sort of thing to be hovering above that the ground. So you would keep this origin here and then your object, regardless of whether it, you know, maybe moved uh, up a ramp. So if I were to, let's see, shift X, if I were to move it like up a ramp like this, it would still be on this imaginary ramp that I've that I've invented, um, but the floor will be right here. Okay, so hopefully my off the off or on the fly uh, examples are making some sense here. I think that's basically um, what I wanted to cover in this video. I don't want to go too deep into uh, edit mode at this point, but I did want to just show you the differences between these different modes. Um, I didn't really talk about or show you much about moving these vertices, but let me just show you really quick. If you select like one of these faces and you try and move it, it's going to move the entire face versus just one vertex or one edge. And then I'll also show you that if you, for example, rotate it, it's going to rotate that entire face. So these are all, um, different ways to edit shapes and we'll be going over some more of these later in the series. So I'm going to wrap up this video for now. Hopefully this has been helpful and that you have a decent idea of the difference between object mode and edit mode and how to switch between them with the tab key or by selecting things in here. You can ignore the rest of these for now. Um, I don't think we'll even need really any of them um, for this series because most of them are for like animation. Um, so or for other types of shapes that we're not likely to need at this point. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and as always, I appreciate you watching.